What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Igmatica 2 Expert, where I'm lighting myself on fire. Oh, yeah. So we're down here at the bedrock level, and I am placing down a bunch of fires around because we are going to be trying to collect some of the infinity dust. Yep, so the way the infinity dust works is you light bedrock on fire, and you just heard a sound there. Yep. Uh, as the fire goes out, there's a 50% chance that it will produce the infinity dust. Um, I don't know if these things actually burn or not. Seems kind of silly if they did, huh? It seems like they're coming towards us on fire. <laughs> I'm not sure if we're losing any, though. Uh, but yeah, pretty much this is the starting way to collect infinity dust in this mod pack. Anyway, I did see there was some interesting things you can do with this. If we take a look at the uses, we can turn these into... Uh, the compressed dust blocks, or I guess the dust blocks. And then if we do that, we can do compressed infinity dust blocks. So that is like 81 infinity dust. And then we can do a double compressed. But yeah, what's interesting though, is if we take a look, um, let's go back. Where is it? Back here. If we look at the recipes of the infinity dust, we can see in a sag mill, if we are sag milling infinity dust, we get nine of those plus infinity dust. This stuff doesn't really have much use, but it says that it can spawn endermen and other monsters, which is kind of interesting. Um, if we take a compressed infinity dust block, so 81 of those, and we put it through a sag mill, right? We get a chance of getting extra grain, plus it gives us the infinity dust blocks back. So if we just craft those back into this and put it back through, then we can keep getting a 5% chance of this. And it says it's modified by the grinding ball. So if you set up like an automation here, you can potentially get a whole lot of the infinity dust that way. But what's kind of interesting caught my attention is if you do a double compressed infinity dust block, yeah, you get your compressed ones that you can craft back in here, but then there's a 5% chance of getting the infinity dust block and then a 10% chance of a green infinity. So anyway, this is like the loop you'd want to be doing here is collecting a whole lot of this stuff and that way you can make yourself a whole bunch of grains of infinity that way yeah anyway i thought that was kind of interesting but to get us started just letting bedrock on fire is how we get ourselves the infinity dust now we did get some of this infinity dust previously and i think we got it from a reward or something i'm not entirely sure where we got it all from but i went down uh to bedrock level and i farmed up a little bit with this flint and steel and i was like you know what we don't get a lot of use out of a flint and steel so i put on breaking on there and mending so i can repair it and then the mending on this seems to uh, repair quite quickly, actually, with one of those orbs. <laughs> so, yeah, that's fully repaired now, ready to go again if we want to go collect more of this stuff. But anyway, what I want to do today is start working towards Ender I.O. And in order to do that, we need to unlock the Ender I.O. gate. Yeah, so we have to make a simple machine chassis. So it says, completing this quest opens the Ender I.O. chapter. So to make a simple machine chassis, we need titanium aluminide plates. Aluminide plates? Maybe. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Um, so we need the ingot, and it looks like the alloy furnace, once again, is going to be our go-to for that. So it is seven aluminum plus three titanium. Uh, did we ever find out how to make titanium? It says it's obtainable through the advanced metallurgic fabricator. Mm-hmm. Okay, so how do we start making this stuff? Let's kind of poke through. So it looks like we have to make this machine. And in order to make that, we have to build this thing. And this looks crazy. So the parts list that we are going to need, I think we looked at this before, is we're going to need mutagen. So yeah, we have to get into a little bit of, um, what is that, the B mod called Gendistry? So it looks like we'll have to do that. Machine casing, I think we're going to be fine. Hardened a hardened glass of some type. I don't think it has to be platinum. Hardened mana. Yeah, any of the hardened glass. So machine controller. All right, so lots of stuff here. So probably the very first thing we should look at, what does a machine controller cost? Machine controller. Is this expensive or is it okay? That requires an ME controller. Oh, boy. What did we just ourselves into? Machine casing. Energy acceptor. Actually, that's not that big of a deal anymore, is it? All right, so ME controller has to go into the machine thing. We need a screen from RF tools. That is 
rather inexpensive than enhanced circuit board. So in a carpenter, we would just put bronze and some redstone, not a big deal. So the machine controller, not a big deal. Uh, let's take a look at the mutagen producer. This is something we haven't checked out yet. So mutagen producer from Gendistry. This is how you get mutagen. You have to put redstone or glowstone into this machine with power. The power modules require a basic energy cube. Your basic energy cube. Uh, energy tablets and steel casing. Well, we got a recipe for that. We have all this stuff ready to go. That's not really a big deal. Tin plates. I'm just looking to see if there's any gotchas here, but it looks like it looks like we can do this just fine. Okay. Well, there's a lot of parts to craft, and I don't think any of them are really going to be that crazy to look at here. Uh, so tell you what, I'm just going to go ahead and start crafting some things up. I might even make a few more Emmy controllers while we're doing this portion of it because I want to expand out our, our Emmy system downstairs. We only got the three controllers right now. Yeah, we only got three. I would like to try and get a full seven, a full row of those, but more the better. Anyway, I'm going to start working on doing some stuff here and we'll be right back guys. All right. Well, it's not quite fully automatic as far as crafting Emmy controllers, but we got the majority of it. So I was able to get a lot of the pieces together and tell the system to craft 10 Emmy controllers. And yep, things are just happening. All our machines are running. Um, I did make a few more of these metal presses. And after I made uh, all four of these, well, I guess three additional ones, I kind of realized, yeah, it's probably not worth having that many because we have one here that's doing gears and we already have a uh, gear machine from thermal expansion. We got one with plates and again, we have a plate machine. So I don't know, maybe there's some specific plate you can only make with the metal press. Maybe there's some specific gear you can only make with the metal press. Either way, we got these all hooked up. Uh, what we really needed from this though was to have the copper wires being able to be made. Yeah, so we can do that now automatically. Yep, so the uh, interface here feeds it one copper ingot, it runs along, gets stamped, and it goes into this other interface over here, which actually these are just receiving. I don't want those showing up on our uh, interface terminal, so we'll just click that button here. So those will never show up. These are only just receiving items. We're never going to put patterns in them, so they don't need to show there. Uh, but yeah, it looks like pretty much everything can be auto crafted except for uh, the crafting components that we have to do from immersive engineering over there on the engineering workbench behind our alloy kiln or whatever that is. But let's see, where are we with this? Why is this taking so long? It looks like we got things going. We are doing advanced alloys. Oh, does the compressor over here not have speed upgrades or something? No, it does. That's just taking a long time. Let's help this out a little bit. I'll add in those and yeah, that's a little bit faster and we could probably make it faster still by putting in five more, but uh, until we get to the point where we can just auto craft these upgrades. Oh, you know what? I didn't realize we had to do that much more stuff here. There we go. <laughs> that makes me go really fast. I like it. Yeah, if we can get the overclocker upgrades going, that'll help us out a lot with the IC2 portion of all of our crafting. So that's something we should be looking at sometime in the future, I would think. Yeah, here we go. There's 10 enemy controllers. Awesome. So yeah, we're able to craft those up fairly reasonably. If I want to craft 10 more, uh, we're out of bronze. So I just have to tell the system how to do that. But everything else, yeah, we have everything else ready to go. You know what? We should probably just do it. I think we should. How do we do bronze? I don't remember bronze. Let's make a recipe to make bronze. So in the induction smelter, we place in what materials? That'd be one tin and three copper. Tin, copper. And I, I don't remember, did that say that made four ingots or does that make three ingots? I think it makes four, but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, it makes four. Okay, so we want four bronze. Like so. Awesome. All right, let's go throw that over into our induction smelter. Okay, and now if we tell it to make 10 more ME controllers, looks like everything's happy. Yeah, so the bioplastic, that is um, 
two sugar cane put through the menu factory. We don't have that set up as an automatic thing, but I think this is about the only time we ever use the bioplastic. So until we start needing it, I don't think we're really going to automate that process at all. Anyway, let's go ahead and turn that on. We'll just uh, chew through a lot more auto crafting process here. Make a few more of our Emmy controllers. I think that is pretty awesome. Okay, well, I still got to make the machine controller and the rest of the uh, parts for that, but I wanted to bring you guys in, show you what I've been doing here. <laughs> uh, yep, let me go ahead and start doing more crafting, and we'll be back, guys. Oh, goodness, guys. So I've been crafting for nearly an hour now. There's a lot of stuff that goes into this. Now, there's two different recipes. This one right here, you can see there's 25 machine casing. Uh... Yeah, so 25 machine casing, or there's this one where you can do hardened mana infused glass, nine of them, and 16 machine casing. So I did, well, not this particular recipe. There's another one there where it says platinum glass. This is the one that I did. So 16 machine casing plus nine hardened platinum glass. I figure it's not the any kind of hardened glass. It has to be platinum or mana infused because those are the only two specified. It just doesn't say hardened glass. But anyway... I went through it and made all these things. The machine controller was a real pain to make. Um, pretty much everything from modular machinery is kind of a pain. Let's take a look at this. If you guys haven't seen this yet, let's go back. I just got done making that thing. Yeah, let's take a look. Like item output. So to make one of these, we need these machine casings, three of them. And to make two, you need a redstone engineering block plus four of these modularium alloys, okay? The modularium alloy... Yeah, that's electrical steel, platinum ingots, pulsating crystal, and empowered palace crystal. So I had to make, uh, I think, eight additional blocks of palace crystal, uh, or I guess the empowered palace crystal in order to do this. Pulsating crystal, that's a diamond wrapped with pulsating iron nuggets. That's iron plus an ender pearl through like the uh, induction smelter, so it's not really a huge issue, but it does cost a diamond. But anyway, making all of this stuff and making sure we had enough of it, yeah, that was a real pain to do. But we got to the point where we have all this stuff now. Um, I did set up a recipe for making iron rods through the metal press. So, I mean, I guess having all those extra ones isn't that huge of an issue. But, yeah, definitely something that we needed to do. Otherwise, we would do with this recipe, which is very, very wasteful. Yeah, you kind of want to have this machine set up. And in the future, when we get into advanced rocketry, this lathe seems to be the most ideal method of doing it. But I know the advanced rocketry machines take up a bunch of space, so we'll see. But anyway, uh, so I did make this machine blueprint. You can make that. Uh, this is the recipe I did with the advanced control circuits, more modularium alloys, and then the engineer's blueprint. Yep, and then with this thing, you can just right-click it. It shows you the layout, and it gives you the shopping list of all the items you need. Now, I don't know, sometimes this mod requires you to have the blueprint installed in the controller in order for it to work, and in some mod packs, it doesn't. So, anyway, I just went ahead and I made this thing. I got tired of searching for it in JEI. Um, but, yeah, it does require fiery metal. Yeah, so we have six blocks of that. Pretty much everything on the shopping list we have in here, except for the mutagen. So that's the next stop. I just went and I made this mutagen producer, and this... Uh, seems like it's not that bad of a recipe. Where, what was the thing that I just made that was a pain? Oh, that's right. It was, uh, this guy. The energy input? This? No, 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 that's not it. One of these things required a circuit that was, uh, a real pain to make. I don't remember, was it the energy? Oh, it might have been the energy. Oh, we just looked at that one. Uh, okay. I can't remember now. Fluid input? Oh, it's the machine circuitry. That's right. That requires this intricate circuit board, and this guy requires all three of these plus two ultimate control circuits, which at this point we can only make on the empowerer. So using the atomic alloys and lead control circuit, we have these in auto craft, but having to make that manually and then yeah, place all these things into the carpenter. I can see in the future that, well, I was going to say, I was going to see in the future that we're probably going to have to have a whole array of carpenters for all these different recipes, but we'll probably end up making this advanced carpenter where we can just pipe in the items and it'll just craft it. Anyway, uh, so mutagen producer. Let's take a look at this thing. We need to set this down somewhere where we can get power right there. That works. This holds 5 million RF. Okay. 
So let's take a look at mutagen. Now, like I said before, redstone or glowstone is what I remember making mutagen. So a block makes 900, a dust makes 100, a dust makes 200, and a block makes 800. Oh, I don't know. Probably glowstone. What do we have the most of? Redstone or glowstone? Probably redstone, I would imagine. Yeah, we got a bunch of redstone. So we need to make six buckets of that. So we need six of these plus six of these. Yeah, that will make six buckets. What's the internal inventory of this hole? It does not say. Okay, that's great. Oh boy, this machine takes forever. Now, I know people were telling me before in the comments a long time ago <laughs> that there's an item in this mod pack called time in a bottle. And I haven't bothered looking at this thing because we haven't needed it. There's been nothing so far where I'm like, oh, things are going too slow. I need to speed this up until now. So I've never used this item before. Never used it. I know it's something to do with while it's in your inventory, a clocks up to a certain amount of time and then you can right click it or something on a machine and then it use the time that's saved up to increase the uh the rate on which the machine works uh if i right click that did that do anything like it speeds up the ticks or something maybe it's a shift right click i i don't know shift right click on this thing maybe you just have to let it be in your inventory for so long actually if we look at the recipe there's a thing here this item allows you to accelerate the rate at which blocks tick. It passively collects time while in your inventory, which you consume by right-clicking a block with it. The first click requires 30 seconds. The second, 60, and the third, 120. Fourth, 240, and the fifth, 480. The speed at which the block ticks doubles, the speed at which the block ticks doubles with each click. The effect lasts 30 seconds, and you can only have one in your inventory at a time. Okay, so we can double, I guess quadruple the tick rate at this point since we have over a minute. So let's put these in here. I'm gonna click it and click it again. So I assume that's using a bunch more power. I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, these are one of these items that you kind of want to have in your inventory, I would imagine, like pretty much all the time. If I click it again, it won't let me do it. Okay, so you have to have like 180 seconds on the bottle in order to like go up the third click apparently yeah this is the first time i've ever used this thing so but well, definitely speeds it up significantly and now we're back down to the slow speed all right well we're almost at 60 seconds again so i'll just double click it a couple more times and then we should get ourselves the full six buckets here very shortly you know, I don't think I've ever placed down these fiery blocks before. Their texture is very, very cool. It's a connected texture. Um, and when you're looking at it from an angle here, you can see like this outline of a border, right? But as you move to the side of it, that border goes away. Yeah, it's an interesting effect. I kind of like that. I'm not sure if I'd ever build, you know, anything out of it, but yeah, I thought that was pretty neat. If you haven't seen that before, yeah. Definitely worth checking out, I would say. But anyway, we're in the process of setting this guy up, so let's get started here. So we need like these blocks around the outside here. I think these like that. Uh, we need three blocks on the back. Let's take a look. We look at the blueprint here. Uh, yeah, so it's a three by two on the fiery on the bottom. Yep. On the back here, we have, I think that's the energy and then probably item in, item out. Is that fluid in, fluid out? Ah, I don't know. I guess the controller doesn't go where I just set it either. Yeah, that's one of the problems with these modular machines, like trying to figure out which block is wick, which. I guess that's the item input on the front and then the controller on top. Oh. I guess the fiery blocks set you on fire. Don't stand on them. Uh, item input. Okay. Controller. There we go. Uh, yeah, then we need the platinum glass around the middle here. Like so. If you walk into it, it doesn't hurt you, but standing on it. Yeah, okay, it's also damaging my armor, so let's not continue to do that. Uh, I think it was the energy input on the back center. 
then again, we're gonna have to refer to the instruction manual here. So we need the green and red. I'm sure we only got a green and red left over. So green and red, green, red. Oh, give me that, give it to me. So there's the platinum glass and then back to here, then we can top that all up. So we need two blocks in the center and then the vents on the outside. Oh, do we need two machine circuitry? It does say two machine circuitry. I only made one. All right, so I placed the mutagen in there that I had in my reservoir, and then I just got done making this machine circuitry. So we place that together and nothing happens. Do I have to put this in here? Uh, advanced my allergic fabricator, blueprint found, structure found, no matching recipe found. Okay. So I wasn't sure if this thing was set up correctly. Uh, in the last few packs that I played with this modular machine in there, like when you place a structure together, all the blocks turn like a brownish orange color. That didn't happen here, but it says that the structure is found and the blueprint is found. So that is all I need to see. So if we go in here, we look at the uses for that thing. We can see we can make myrian ingots. We can make titanium ingots. These are what we're looking for. So we need salt, magnesium, or liquid chlorine. Uh-oh. Oh boy. Oh geez. Uh okay, so we need brine to make sodium and chlorine. And brine. Oh, uh, do we have to do the whole solar evaporator thing? Or is there another way to do it? So it looks like a melter from nuclear crap takes salt and turns it into brine. So we're gonna need a whole lot of salt to do that. Uh, is there another way to do it? There's gaseous brine turned into brine. How do we make gaseous brine? Chemical oxidizer. Okay, so we could do it this way, make a chemical oxidizer. It doesn't say how much brine that is. Yeah, it doesn't really say, does it? Okay, well, then we need a, a rotary condensator to turn the gaseous version into the liquid version. And then we need an electrolytic separator to make chlorine. Okay, so if we look back at the uses for this machine, magnesium ore, salt, carbon plates, and then liquid chlorine. So one bucket, we're gonna need two carbon plates, eight salt, and four magnesium ore. I guess the first place for us to start at this point, do we have the magnesium ore? Because if not, we're going to be kind of stuck here. So let's just take a look real quick. Magnesium. We do not have magnesium ore. So how does one make magnesium ore? We can... Okay, so we have ore pieces. Crushed nether rack. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, so crushed netherrack on a diamond stiffness, 20%, 15% on iron, 10% on flint. So if we do it on the diamond stiffened mesh, we can get it at 20%. All right, so we have a way of making magnesium, so all is not lost. So going back to the titanium ingots here, uh, salt, yeah, the chlorine is the next situation. So we need to get ourselves, I think we're going to do this method, a rotary condensator. So that is inexpensive. This is all stuff that we've made before. That's not a big deal. Uh, then we're going to need to get ourselves the electrolytic separator. So this is all basic mechanism stuff, nothing complex here. Uh, and then we are going to need, uh, what were we gonna do, the melter? Or was there another method? Gaseous brine, right. We're gonna do the chemical oxidizer, I think. So two ultimate control circuits. Stone burnt, ultimate gas tank. All right, that's not that big of a deal. A personal chest, we can do that. Yeah, yeah, we can do all of this stuff. Okay, well, I'm gonna get to it. We're gonna do it the whole mechanism route to try and get the chlorine. Let me do that, we'll be back. All right guys, so it looks like these three machines are what we're gonna need. So the chemical oxidizer is gonna take salt. It's gonna turn that into a gaseous brine. We're gonna concentrate that through the rotary concentrator. And then that is gonna be piped over into electrolytic separator, which should produce chlorine. 
Yep, that's what we're looking for. Uh, so I haven't tested this yet. I just ran power cables over there. We didn't have any power running to that certain location. So yeah, that used up pretty much the last of our redstone energy flux ducts. I keep making these things and I keep thinking, oh man, we're gonna be getting rid of those in the future. What a waste, but you know, we need power and it's kind of a pain to switch over to another uh, power supply, power cabling or whatever. So we're just gonna go with it. So for now, we need to go downstairs and get some salt. Yeah, we can craft that immediately through this right here, thanks to our sink over here. So we can just craft many, many, many stacks of that and not even care because it's free. Okay, so we have the salt. We need a way to put the salt in the machine. And let's just, well, actually, I think we're gonna need some conduit here, the uh, fluid conduit in order to move stuff around. I think uh, that's called a gas, gaseous brine, I think, but I don't, I think we can move it around with the fluid pipe. I could be wrong. We might have to make some mechanism gas pipes. Anyway, let's try putting brine or salt in here and see what happens. So that turns into, oh, it immediately gets kicked over. Okay, so this was something that I wasn't sure what was gonna happen. There is no configuration for this machine. You can't say input on this side, output that that side automatically output, don't automatically output. Uh, so I place this machine down and I place this one next to it and it looks like everything's working correctly. Now this machine has brine in it, but the brine is not being moved over into the electrolytic separator. This is the thing that, yeah, we need to move this over one. Uh, we can take that, pop that up, do one of those, and place this here. All right, so we got power. And then if we put a conduit between them, we have to extract it here. We might extract, always active. And this will be set to insert only. Okay, so we have sodium and chlorine. All right, so this is what we want but my goodness is that slow. <laughs> so are we just getting like one millibucket of chlorine per salt? I think that might be what's going on. So we're gonna wanna upgrade these machines for sure. They are going far too slow. Uh, we're gonna need eight speed upgrades in three of them and eight energy upgrades in all three of them as well. Uh, speed upgrade, do we have those in auto craft? We don't, no. So max speed. So to make those, we need osmium dust. We should probably make an auto craft for that osmium. Oh, you know, we got plenty of osmium dust. Okay, no, you know what? We're fine, we're good. Uh, so we want 41 of those apparently because I was expecting it to go to a stack of eight and stop, but that's not what happened. Okay, well, we're good. A <laughs> uh, little overkill, but I think we can make this work. And then eight of those, all right. So we have the speed upgrades and then we're gonna need more alloys. So let's make, I don't know, like a hundred more of those things. How are we doing on gold? Cause gold is what we need for the energy. We don't have enough of that. So uh, we want this much gold. Put that through our pulverizer. Okay, now if we just tell it to craft as many energy upgrades as you can, we should just get 24. And that's what we need, awesome, all right. So, it's probably gonna be best if we get ourselves like a solar evaporator or something in order to make the brine itself. But yeah, I kind of want to see how this is gonna work. Uh, let's just shift click those in there and get these things, the energy, so we're not spending too much power. Okay, that's going a little bit more reasonably. Okay, this thing can also get the upgrades. And of course this one over here and like so okay so this one is using 240 rf predict that's really not that big of a deal but yeah we aren't getting the chlorine very very fast what's this one using 180 yeah this is the uh the expensive one 1 1.2 thousand rf per tick all right so we got to figure out a better way to get brine um is there a better way for us to do it? There's the thermal evaporator. I don't remember how long this thing takes to make and how expensive this is. I know it takes up a big multi-block and then we need like four of the advanced uh, solar things. You can't even see them, they're not showing up here. Yeah, we need four of these guys in order to get that to work. Mm, 
It seems like a lot of work if we can do another way. I think I'm going to try and investigate. Whoop. I think I'm going to try and investigate if there is another way for us to make Brian or get Brian or make this faster. Anyway, let me get to that and we'll be back, guys. All right, guys. Well, I just made this melter from Nuclear Craft. Apparently, that was uh, a quest. Wasn't trying to complete a quest, but we did. Uh, and what I saw here, as far as the brine goes, let's go back up. Uh, yeah, brine, if we are, oh boy, where is it? Yeah, so it's saying one salt turns into 15 millibuckets of brine itself. And what we're doing right here with the rotary condensator and our chemical oxidizer, we're only making one millibucket per. So it seems like we can get rid of both of these machines and swap in just this melter here. So let's give that a try. Let's see what happens. So we place that here and we place in this. Is that doing, oh, that's okay. And then what's the uh, power usage on this? This is using less power and it's doing it way better. Now we can also put speed and energy upgrades into this machine. Let's give that a try. I know we had some speed upgrades over here and I believe the energy upgrades we don't have, but yeah, we should be able to give it a decent amount of power. So let's do speed. We have eight of them. I'm not sure what that's going to change the power usage to. It's probably going to be a lot of power. But if we can get this going that much faster, I think it's going to be better overall. I can just right click those in there. So how much? Oh, that's using 90,000 RF per tick. What? Okay, that's too much. Uh, 30,000. 12,000. All right, we definitely, definitely, definitely need the energy upgrades in there. One speed upgrade in there is making you 6,000. Yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, uh, this is nuclear craft. Energy, yeah, these guys. So that's, that actually isn't that bad. Okay, I didn't know that it was that cheap. Let's try putting in some energy upgrades. All right, so just checking it out, I made eight of these energy upgrades since we had eight of the speed upgrades. And with both of those applied, you know, it's 10,000 RF per tick to do this. Uh, actually, that was weird. It says processing power 5,000, but when it's not going, it says it costs 10,000. I don't understand. Are we just using 10,000 RF per tick, not doing anything, or does that have some kind of an energy bonus? I don't, I'm not entirely sure how that's working. Uh, but anyway, if we take out some of those, we can get it down to 3,000 RF, and it's really not that much slower, right? So I think that would be a pretty viable way for us to get this chlorine. Yeah, well, we're going to have to take a look at this. We'll look at uh, getting this a little bit more efficient, I do believe, next time. But yeah, we set up our first modular machinery machine. That's pretty cool. It took a lot of resources. We got a little bit of the Gendistry mutagen in there. We saw the, uh, the cool fiery block. I haven't seen that before. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.